welcome to the Dunkelgrün podcast. My name is Anna and this is a knitting podcast. I am also a scientist and I like to throw in some little scientific bits all around the world of wool and fibers here and there. So today is a lovely Sunday with some sunny weather here in Zurich where I'm coming to you from. This episode I have a little update for you on my knitting projects, a lot of exciting stories about my visit to Scotland to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival which was last weekend and I have a lot of interesting acquisitions both from the festival and also from just before the festival. So let's get started with some knitting projects that I am currently working on. The first project I'd like to show you is looking like this. This is a hat which is knit up sideways. It's called the Toff Hat and it is a pattern by Woolly Warm Hat who is a master hat designer and if you are interested in her as a person, then you might want to check out the Hey Brown Berry podcast because she interviewed Woolly Bormhead at Edinburgh Yarn Festival. I don't know if the video is up yet, I haven't seen it yet, but it might be up soon. So this is the hat that I'm making. As I said, it's the Toff hat and it is a wonderful pattern out of short rows. It is knit sideways. You cast on here with a provisional cast on this beige line is the provisional cast on and then it is knit in short rows and in the end the stitches are grafted together with the cast on stitches and I'm just in love with this pattern. It looks so cool, I really like it. And I like also how my hand dyed yarn is coming out on these garter stitch short rows, it's just really pretty, this variation of colors. And also I love the wrong side of it, it's so cool how the the colors blend together on the wrong side of garter stitch when you work with several colors. And also, yes, there are a couple of ends to weave in <laughs> because each of these um, little short row um, color accents here is knit with a separate... Well, I, started, I cut the yarn and I started again because it's a bit difficult to carry it because it wouldn't be along the same line. It would be carried need to be carried diagonally and that is a little difficult for me to plan and so I just chose to cut the yarn every time and I'll weave in the ends in the end and now it just looks like a funny little octopus here. <laughs> yeah the yarn as I have already indicated is a yarn that I dyed myself it's the Dunkelgrün Organic Merino Decay and this is a super is a superwash merino which has been treated with an EXP certified process which is an environmentally friendly process that does not harm the fibers as much as the conventional process and if you are a returning viewer you have heard me talk about that already if you are a new viewer very welcome to the channel and you might want to check out episode 16 where i talk a bit more in depth about this process this is the second color that I am knitting here and this is this wonderful um, tealy turquoise yarn. I have dyed these two balls of yarn. You might wonder, they are not really my color scheme. I dyed them for a little girl. She's the daughter of my friend who has been giving me a yarn bowl and spindles which he made by himself and I have also showed them in a previous episode and I'm going to show you another one of his yarn bowls that I got from him in this episode. And so I wanted as a little thank you, I wanted to make something for his little daughter and her favorite, favorite colors are purple and turquoise so I dyed up those two skeins for her and the hat is also going to be for her. So the top hat is actually written um, as an adult pattern and there are two different sizes to choose from and you achieve the different sizes by changing your gauge. And I did not do a gauge swatch, <laughs> which is actually really stupid. But what I did, I went down in needle size way more. So the pattern tells you to use, I think, a size um, three and a half or four or something like that. And I'm using a smaller one. So I'm using the three millimeter needles, which is a US two and a half. And I just remember that it's way uh, smaller than what the pattern says in the 
my yarn is also a quite of a thin DK weight yarn and that way I'm thinking about ending up with a small um, hat. And children's hats are anyway, they are usually not growing so much anymore after some point. My friend said that she has a very large head for a three-year-old, she's only three years old, but she has the, a very large head and has the size of a five-year-old, but I think Actually, if I just make a tightly fitting hat that might even fit her for a couple of years. I have made a children's hat for a friend of mine before who could use it for actually for three or four years, even from maybe four years old to eight years old almost, because in the beginning maybe it fits as a bit more of a slouchy hat and then in the end it might be a bit more tight fitting. But the head of a child is actually not the thing that grows the most, to my knowledge, I think. <laughs> Okay, so that's the top hat and I am enjoying the knit. I really like the pattern, it is written in a genius way. The short rows are charted out in a very clever chart. The only thing is, um, for me, I really need to focus on this pattern. So that's why also I didn't take it with me to the festival, because I need to count all the time when I'm knitting the short rows to keep track of where I am. And it's also not so good for podcast knitting. I, when I'm watching podcasts, I need to stop very often to be able to count and check back where I am, because I don't want to get lost in this. <laughs> Um, pattern so but uh, all in all a very fun knit and a very cool result and I'm looking forward to seeing the finished hat. The next work in progress is only going to make a very quick appearance because it has made several appearances on several episodes of this podcast already and this is my neon radioactive socks well they're not really radioactive I'm just calling them and these are socks for the boyfriend of my sister who has huge feet and I'm knitting them out of my own hand dyed yarn here using DPNs which are two and a half millimeters or US one and a half and um, if you have watched previous episodes you might know that I have been struggling with these socks because they have been on my needles forever or for more than six months now but at some point now I think I am going <laughs> I am on a safe spot, I am going to be able to finish those. So this is the first sock and you can see I have knit up a good amount of the leg now and I will soon be able to do the cuff. And also the second sock is, whoops, is losing some stitches here. Okay, I was losing some stitches, I had to get, grab them back up because it's just here resting on two DPNs. And uh, I have made the heel, finished the heel and I am ready to knit up the leg, so I think Fingers crossed, these socks are going to be finished at some point. But now they are going to disappear again. If you're interested in those socks and you haven't seen them before, check out one of my previous episodes where I talk about them in more detail. The last work in progress that I have been working on during the last two weeks is a very, very special one. So, as I have already said, I went to Edinburgh Yarn Festival and it was the best experience of my knitting life so far. Uh, I traveled there together with my lovely friend Magdalena of the Wolf und Schafe podcast or Wolf und Schafe Yarns and we took a train together from Zurich to Basel where we took the plane to Edinburgh and on the, plane, uh, on the train we decided to cast on a project together. Magdalena cast on a pair of socks and I cast on a shawl. And it's already so big! I mainly knitted on this at EYF, I didn't knit an, on anything else at EYF, but also on the way back and during this last week I have been working on it a bit. And it is just so lovely and colorful. I love it. This is my hand spun yarn. And it was a roving or a comb top from Malabrigo. It's the Malabrigo Noob, and this is a non-superwash merino wool. Actually, all the Malabrigo yarns are superwash, but the Noob, the spinning fiber, is not. And I spun it up quite finely on my spinning wheel. I think it has something between 400 and 500 meters on a 100 gram, which is fingering or a light fingering weight yarn. And the colors are just gorgeous. I love how they mix up in this ball. And I've actually talked about the spinning process of this um, about one year ago on the podcast. It was the, the last spinning pro 
project that I actually finished or that I actually made proper yarn from. And yeah, then it, it made an appearance on the podcast already. I don't remember on which episode. And this has been lying around in my stash. It was a very special skein to me because I really love the colors of it. And it is a very fine hand spun yarn. And I thought for the festival, I would just cast on a triangular shawl without any pattern, just um, for those of you who don't know, you can start um, casting on here a few stitches at the center of the triangle and then you work increases. You just do an increase at each side and two increases in the center and that is very easy to, to work on. So the wrong sides are just pearl rows or knit rows or anything you want but without any increases and on the right side you would work the increases and then you get a triangle. And because this yarn is already super busy I decided to keep it simple, maybe throw in a couple of garter stitch stripes and you can see I have also added here a short row wedge and also on the other side. But now I have to be careful because otherwise I am losing stitches here as well. <laughs> so that's the other side here. There is this red short row wedge. And I'm just knitting on it the way that I want. Like, However it strikes me, I am adding a little bit of garter or a little bit of stockinette. And I think it will be gorgeous because from far away it looks almost like grey. But when you go up closer you see all these gorgeous colors in it. And also I love, really love the wrong side. Today we have the day of the wrong side <laughs> because I love how the colors are blending into each other on the pearl side. I might have to make something with colors, with stripes in reverse stockinette stitch or gar reverse garter stitch doesn't make any sense but you know in garter stitch when you work color stripes the two sides are not the same and I really like the wrong side where the colors blend into each other like that. So this project has a lot of dear memories because I knit on it while I was talking to the most wonderful people who I never expected to meet in person and it was such a great time that we had together and these memories will forever be in this shawl and so that is my EYF shawl. So that is it with my works in progress and I am going to show you some things that are new in my stash. So already before I went to Edinburgh I actually bought some books. Only two of them have arrived and two of them I am still waiting for. This wonderful book here which is the Alternate Stitch Dictionary by Andrea Rangel and it has 200 modern knitting motifs. It is a, basically a stitch dictionary of color work. So, and the color work is not really the traditional kind of color work uh, that you would find in Scandinavia or on the Shetland Islands. It is a very modern take on color work. As you can see here, some very geometric shapes and I really love it. It's really cool and it's really interesting. It has also some general tips about color work and then inside you have all those gorgeous little swatches together with a little chart on how you can make that. And I have been playing around a little bit with that already. I am going to talk about that afterwards when I talk about some of the yarn that I got at EYF. The other book that I got has been making some appearances on other people's podcasts and I actually saw it first on uh, the podcast of Maria of Ninja Chicken Chickens. She made a review of this book and also Magdalena of Wolf und Schafe has made a review of this book. I have bought it myself. I was not endorsed by Vogue Knitting. This is the ultimate knitting book by Vogue Knitting and they have apparently published that already at some time in the 80s and now they have re-edited it for today's time. If you want to know more about the book, you should check out Maria's podcast or Magdalena's podcast and the review that they made about it, because I'm not going to talk about it in detail, but I really like it. It has everything in it. So if you're ever not motivated to look up a YouTube video and find one that really um, explains the right thing, let's say for a specific cast on or so, this book has it in it. It is not too thick, not too much, uh, not too many pages for the fact of all the things that are in here. There's also a lot of stuff about designing, designing sweaters, shawls, hats, everything that you need to keep in mind, measurements and techniques, any technique you can think of is going to be described in here and I am happy to have it. I really like the book. It's also just very beautifully made to browse and everything. So these are the two books that I have gotten and the other thing and the other thing that I have received was a package from Austria 
and it is from my good high school friend Elias. I have talked about him before on the podcast and he is the father of the girl for whom I make the tough hat and he went to school with me back in Austria. We actually met when we were 10 years old I think and went to school together all the way through when we were 18 and then he moved to Vienna to go to university and I moved to Zurich to go to university and since then we have not had so much um, contact anymore but every couple of years or so there's still something that we get in touch with about and recently uh, he got in touch with me about um, his wood turning activities. I think he started wood turning in I think 2016 or 17 and um, I have jokingly mentioned that he could make a drop spindle and so he came back to me about that and we started to chat about wooden tools that the knitting people are using and he got really fascinated about it and started to share things on Instagram and now he is making a couple of tools already for the knitters and I have received two wonderful um, wonderful projects from him or I could even say masterpieces and this is the first one it is a yarn bowl that is designed to knit with several colors so it has a yarn guide here and another yarn guide here and a third one here actually I asked for two yarn guides but he was uh, super excited about it and made three so here you could put in three balls of yarn and then guide them through the three different holes and so that the yarn won't get tangled it has these little pins here and you can close it like that so that is so smart and he also sent me an extra one of those pins in case one of them gets lost which was so thoughtful thank you so much Elias and yeah the wood here the bottom wood the brighter one is olive wood and the top one is mahogany and I don't know if the light allows for you to see that if you have strong light on it you have this effect which I forgot the name of now it is an effect of when an optical effect when you have those several layers of wood and it's a bit shiny and the bottom is also really pretty it has this little indent here it's just a gorgeous little bowl and the, the center of mass is really well at the bottom of the bowl so when you put it on your table and you put yarn balls in and you pull the, the thing does not move it really has a very good um, stability when you put it on your table and I really love it so thank you so much Elias for this gorgeous bowl the other thing he made for me is a nostepinne and this is a little tool that has become quite famous recently because of Nina from Fox and the Sheep because she hand carves her beautiful nostepinnes. This one is also a handmade one from my friend but it has been turned on the... I don't know anymore what this is called in English but it has been hand turned by him and it is made out of juniper wood and can you see those awesome structures of the wood on this nostepin? It is so beautiful. It has this wonderful variation of colors and the knots and everything. And as he said, with this juniper wood, you never really know what you're getting. And I think what we got here is pretty cool. And if you don't know what an pin is useful for, it is for here you have a, a stick a handle to hold it. And then here you can wind your ball of yarn and I'm going to have a video of two crazy ladies at EYF winding a ball of yarn that I'm going to insert towards the end of the episode so you can see how such a tool is actually used and this one actually smells really good of the juniper wood or maybe it's also the um, oil that he used for finishing it it just smells delicious also the bowl it smells delicious so these wonderful wooden tools are from my friend Elias and he's Eli Steel on Instagram and he also has a website now which is elisteel.at and it is only available in German but you find his email address there in case you would like to contact him. So that was it about um, with my pre EYF acquisitions and now I'd like to talk a little bit about the festival itself. So as I said I was traveling there together with Magdalena from Wolf und Schafe and we had a um, 
the same flight but unfortunately we were a bit too late on reserving the spots on the plane so we couldn't sit together anymore but I had fun nonetheless on the plane because I was sitting next to two knitters. I was sitting down next to this lady and she was wearing a wonderful, wonderful cardigan, um, which I, was one of the Marie Wallen's uh, cardigans from her Shetland book, so you can imagine it was very intricate and beautiful. And she was from France and her name was Isabelle and she was traveling together with her friend Dominique and uh, they were so kind and actually Isabelle recognized me because she watches the podcast. So a very very warm hello to you Isabelle. It was a pleasure to meet you and sit next to you on the plane and chat with you about knitting and get warm and ready for EYF. It was just really wonderful and I hope you had a wonderful EYF as well. Then when we arrived in Edinburgh everything actually went re really quickly. We got through the the immigration, we got on the bus and we were at the corn exchange and we went inside. There was nobody there, we arrived at about 3.30 in the afternoon and we had tickets for the big knit night in the evening so we could just um, actually access the marketplace from 4 p.m. but they let us in even earlier, they were just like all right just come in and it was really strange because I was just in, in Switzerland and then like very shortly afterwards I was standing there in the middle of the festival at the Corn Exchange and actually like 10 meters in I already walked into Maria of the Ninja Chickens podcast and uh, also met uh, Mars of Hey Brown Berry and it was just wonderful. I was so excited to see them in real life because I have seen them of course in their videos on YouTube and on their pictures on Instagram but they were never like real people to me so this was so amazing to see them and I was just completely overwhelmed, I couldn't really grasp it, I was just, I don't know, my mind traveled far away. Anyways, in the evening of Thursday night we went uh, to the big knit night at the Corn Exchange and it was very crowded and very full of people who were knitting and everybody was really excited and talking about yarn and sharing projects and showing um, what they were working on. It was just such a colorful, beautiful tribe to be with on that evening. And we um, got stopped by a lovely lady. She just said, hi, I want to say hi to you. And uh, it was Ida from Knitting Pace podcast. I didn't know her before. And it turned out that they had two seats left at their table. So Magdalena and I were able to sit with them. And it, there was also Raquel, who I have known a very little bit from Instagram, Raquel Francia, and it was such a pleasure to sit there and knit with them. They were so friendly and um, interesting girls. They were wearing beautiful handmade sweaters and it was a very big joy. We also had some nice food there. And then I also met uh, Minna of Finfrost and she actually gave me the cutest little handmade gift. This is the cute little project bag that Minna gave to me. I hope it doesn't have any cat hair on it because my cat was already inspecting everything that I got at EYF. So this beautiful green and purple bag made by Minna and here is a cute little Moomin on the zipper and those fabrics actually she got them during her trips to Namibia last year and Minna also has a podcast which I shame on me I have not seen yet it is the Frostbites podcast and I didn't know about it I am really sorry Minna it's just sometimes I, the world is too big for me and I don't see everything so you have to forgive me but uh, now that I have met her, I really want to check out her podcast and I'm sure that I'm going to love it because she's a very lovely and very, very creative person. So Mina, it was a pleasure to meet you and thank you very much for this cute little bag. It will be precious to me. And also at the Big Knit Night, we ran into the big uh, podcaster's uh, pos, which was uh, Christine of the Yarngasm podcast and um, Ellie of Skein Deer and also Emily of Arctic Knitting and Grace O'Neill from the Travel Babble, I always forget that name, Traveling Babbles Yarns podcast, this was wrong, I will put the information here, and Grace was just such a powerful appearance, she just, she just came there and hugged me and showed us her beautiful handwoven uh, 
shawl or scarf actually and she was just so uh, full of energy and it was wonderful to connect with her I really enjoyed meeting her so thank you very much Grace for this wonderful moment of meeting you and also Grace has actually done a little interview with me which you can find I think on her Friday vlog I was already completely overwhelmed and tired but Grace did a wonderful job and interviewed me and she was guiding me very nicely so that it actually felt quite comfortable to be interviewed. And yeah, towards the end of the knit night, we're still on Thursday night now, towards the end of the knit night I realized there was a, a girl sitting behind me with the most beautiful cardigan that she made with a beautiful lace panel in the end, uh, in the back and she had also like a raglan shape which she has made with short rows and it was just beautiful and then I was like wow this cardigan is so beautiful and she was like thank you I designed it myself and it turned out that she was actually a knitwear designer who is designing some beautiful patterns and she has written a book and she gave a copy to me and this book is the create your own Lopa Pesa book which is um, basically a guide on how you can knit your own Icelandic yoked Lopa Pesa sweater. And her name is Oidir Björt Skuladottir and I was just blown away when she just packed out this book because I have honestly been looking for something like that online already because I really love those yokes and as you know me I love to do my own thing. I love to paint my own pattern, I love to dye my own wool and create my own color schemes and so this is just perfect because in here you have not only like the most important measurements and everything you have some kind of pictures like this where you can choose different traditional Icelandic patterns and you might also be able to modify them and add your own color work patterns and then there are instructions to knit the a uh, Lopa Pesa sweater for children from the age of 2 to 10 and also for adult sizes extra small to XX large. So that is so cool. I am so happy to have that and all that in just a little booklet like this. And I think actually this book came out of um, Oydir Björt's uh, thesis because she studied, um, what did she study? Textiles as her major, she did a bachelor's degree and for the graduation project she explored the history of traditional Icelandic sweaters and I think this book is a big result also of her work, um, uh, of her studies as a textile designer, textilist, I don't know what you are after you study textiles, but um, yes, I really treasure that. Thank you very much, Oidir, I, um, I will certainly make good use of that. Also, together with Oidir, there was a um, another lovely Icelandic woman who is dyeing yarn, and she has the company called Dottir Dye Works, and this is really cool because, you know, in Iceland, all the women have the word Dottir in their last name because they have the, get the name of their father together with Dottir, which means daughter, and that is a really cool name. And also with these two sheep here in the logo, I think that is very, a very cool idea for a yarn company. And she dyes some really cool yarn. I don't know if she's in business yet, but she says you can follow her on Instagram and Facebook and the online shop is going to open in 2018. So I really like this little mini skein and I'm thinking about making a pair of socks where I use this for knitting the cuff. Might be enough huh? because it is 20 grams. At least a part of the cuff I could make with this and the rest of the sock like in a, in a solid color that matches. That's what I'm thinking about doing with this because I think it's really pretty and I don't know what else to make with so, so little yarn. I love it. Thank you very much. <laughs> So the next day on Friday I arrived at the festival rather early because I didn't have a ticket and I wanted to check out how long the queue is to get inside and it was actually rather short, it was about 9 o'clock at that time or 9.15 and I thought okay the queue is super short, I'm going to queue and um, otherwise if, we, if it would have been too long I would have gone into a coffee shop or so but I thought I will queue and it turned out that the queue was not moving, it was just standing still for about an hour 
and then in the end it started moving and then we got in rather quickly but I was standing in the queue for about an hour I met two lovely ladies one from Ireland and one from the southern UK and they were very chatty and nice I actually forgot their names I'm really sorry I forgot their names but they were very nice and friendly and it was nice to connect with them and when we finally got into the festival, it was actually already pretty crowded and I went straight ahead to the podcaster's lounge because also I didn't have any breakfast yet and I was completely overwhelmed and tired and then it started to get really full of people because at 12 o'clock there was the official uh, podcaster's lounge meetup appointment or like from 12 to 2 they had this podcasters lounge event where all the podcasters were invited to come and all the viewers and it started to get really busy and it was just so crazy with all the people who were there and everybody I have met. So on Friday I was basically hanging out in the corner at the podcasters lounge almost a whole day and there I met so many wonderful people I don't even know where to start. Uh, there was Nina Pomarenke of Fox and the Sheep and her mother Susanne who is a um, garden woman on Instagram and these two are just such creative lovely persons. They are both uh, from Germany but they have moved to Sweden already uh, 10 years ago. There was also Lerke of the Fiber Tales podcast with her friend Heidi and uh, they were also really nice to connect to and also Ida of the Knitting Pace podcast uh, was there again and Raquel who I have already met at the Big Knit Night. Also Hanna Lisa of the Hanna on the Road podcast and Hanna Lisa Haferkamp uh, project bags was there and Verena Kors and I was so happy to connect with them in real life because we had also already been um, in touch uh, via Instagram and email before and I really love what these two are doing. They are such great uh, women in this uh, crafting world and it was very nice to hang out with them even though I could see they were probably as overwhelmed as I was with all the crowd and all the people so I think it would be nice also one day to meet in a more relaxed uh, space with not so many people at once to uh, get to chat a little bit more and also there was Erin from Holland Handmade and um, oh, one person who I was really, really happy to connect with. I have to get out something. That actually happened already at the Big Knit Night, but I met her again in the podcaster's lounge. And this was uh, Jessica from Ravelry. And Jessica came uh, to bring these um, Ravelry badges to the festival to give them out to people so that everybody can write their Ravelry name and then wear it as a pin. And this pin actually means quite a lot to me because when I first started uh, to discover forums on Ravelry and chat with other knitters online I saw those pictures of festivals there was also something like the German Raveler meeting and I saw that people had these badges on the pictures and for me it was always something that I'm not really a part of because I didn't have the money and the time as a student to travel to such events and it was something that I was looking up to in a way and I didn't even think that one day I would really be a part of it. I was feeling like just a digital, in a digital way, I was feeling a part of it but not in real life. So when I went up to the booth and um, got this Ravelry badge from Jessica, my heart was really full and then Jessica even recognized me because she knows my podcast and that was just a really huge thing for me and I think Ravelry means so much to all of us it's the reason why we are all here it's the reason why we have podcasts it's the reason why those festivals are so uh, well visited and why we are all connected and I I hope I said thank you well enough to you, Jessica, because it really means a huge, huge deal to me and I think also to many other knitters. And I am very proud to wear this Ravelry badge and belong to belong to this amazing community now also in real life. 
So yeah, the whole Friday was absolutely overwhelming. There were so many people. I have probably not mentioned everybody who I met and who I hung out with. There was also Maria again from Ninja Chickens and uh, Mars from Hey Brownberry and all the other big podcasters. I met uh, Andrea and Andrew from Fruity Knitting and I was able to chat with them a little bit. And it was just amazing to see them and their gorgeous sweaters in real life. And towards the end of the day, I realized I was just so completely overwhelmed. I didn't buy any yarn yet. And then the festival was actually already closing. And then towards the end of the evening, I met three wonderful ladies from Luxembourg. This was uh, Françoise, Kriti and Michelle. And these three wonderful ladies had an extra ticket for the Cayley, which was the traditional Scottish dance event, which was happening at the Corn Exchange on Friday night and they were so nice and gave it to me. I don't even know how to say thank you and at the Friday night I was already so completely overwhelmed with all the impressions that I was probably seeming a little bit out of place and I'm really sorry for that, uh, Françoise, uh, Kriti and uh, Michelle, that I was um, not really present anymore. And unfortunately afterwards we also didn't meet again because it was so crowded and full of people, but I hope that we can make up for that at some other event and maybe next year at EYF. But I wanted to say a huge thank you again for giving me the ticket for the Kaylee. And yeah, then there was the Kaylee. I was sitting at a table with uh, Maria of Ninja Chickens and Mars and um, also Kate of Hawthorne Craft and she was also a really wonderful person, a very calm person. It was nice to calm down a little bit for me and uh, there were also uh, two more Icelandic persons at our table and uh, two, oh I forgot your name, I'm so sorry, a lovely viewer from Germany and her boyfriend, I'm so sorry I forgot your name, who were sitting at our table and were also very nice uh, to chat with. And actually one of the ladies from Iceland, her name was I don't know how to pronounce it, I am sorry. Um, and she went with me to the dance floor in the end. The dance floor was actually pretty crowded in the beginning, so we didn't dare to go into it. I will insert some videos of the dance towards the end of the episode. And um, Bryn Gerdur and me went um, when the evening was already a bit later and some people already got a bit tired of dancing, we went on the dance floor and tried to do those uh, Scottish uh, dance steps, but we were horrible at it and we were both uh, equally horrible at it. So it was a lot of fun and I was very happy that you were there and uh, tried this out with me. So. Then that was Friday night and on Saturday, the third day, I actually realized I hadn't bought any yarn yet because the marketplace was always full of people, I was completely gone, I hadn't eaten enough, I was just, my brain was not working and I was like, I need to buy some yarn. I got some British pounds that I uh, wanted to use for buying yarn and there was so much yarn there, it was incredible. The UK has so many wonderful companies who produce natural fiber uh, yarn and beautiful, beautiful products with beautiful stories behind them. For me, I have to say honestly, it was just a little bit too overwhelming because I had never been to such a big festival before. But then on Friday I was um, already a bit desperate and then uh, Eva showed up who is um, from Glasgow and she has won the giveaway of, uh, one of the giveaways of this podcast, I don't even remember which giveaway it was, but I brought her her giveaway package and then she uh, sat down a little bit in our podcast's lounge corner and knit with us. And Eva was so kind to give me some yarn that she got from a local to her mill. And these are the new Lanark mills and she got three 50 gram balls of yarn from that mill for me. And they are just so beautiful. Look at those beautiful colors. They have this typical heathered effect that I love so much about the Jamiesons of Shetland yarns and there are just many many colors in here and I'm certainly going to make some kind of color work and yeah this is just so wonderful and soft oh, I really love it thank you so much Eva and this was then actually the first yarn that I had at the festival but I didn't even buy it myself it was a gift and 
I was so happy that Eva showed up because she and Ida from Knitting Pace and Nina from Fox and the Sheep, these three lovely girls, decided to be my yarn shopping squad. And so we went together into the crowd of the marketplace. It was actually not that bad anymore because it was already Saturday afternoon and a lot of people were leaving already. And then we went to buy some yarn. And the first booth we went to was the booth of Uradale Yarns. And Uradale Yarns is a producer of organic native Shetland wool. This is one of the yarns that I got from there. So this is their label. And this is, yeah, Shetland wool, which is um, organically produced on Shetland. And they have natural colors and dyed colors as well. And they have um, a fingering weight yarn and a DK weight yarn. I got the fingering weight yarn because it was available in more colors than the DK and it is just heavenly soft Shetland wool. If you know me already, you know that I love, love, love Shetland wool. So this organically produced one was just what I wanted to have and I got several colors. So I got three naturally colored ones. Let me see if I can hold them up. These three are the naturally colored ones, a wonderful gray, brown and a dark Shetland black. This, this black also has some white spots in it. And then I got also three colored uh, balls. And these are these three, a green, a blue and a yellow one. And I love those colors. They're so beautiful, naturally earthy, uh, muted colors, just the way I wanted them. And actually Maria of uh, Ninja Chickens, she got the same yellow and blue one and she was actually the one who inspired me to go to that booth and check out that yarn. And also the natural colors here, they really still smell of lanolin. The dyed colors not so much anymore, of course, because they, had, uh, under they underwent the process of dyeing, but these um, natural colors just still smell so delicious. And with these yarns, I am planning to make a shawl. I want to make a triangular shawl with color work out of them. I have not really fully figured out yet how I'm going to do it. Of course, there's going to be some steaking involved, but I made a little drawing. I made this little drawing um, to play around a little bit with uh, stripey ideas and play a bit with the colors. I used my colored pencils for that. And then also in order to figure out which of the colors would fit uh, together in the color work, I took my colored pencils and I made um, with knitting graph paper. I uh, made this little kind of hand-drawn swatch, so to say. And I used all the six colors that I have, once as a background and once as the accent color, and filled in the little graph. And I think this is a really nice way to see which colors actually pop when you t take them together or make a nice pattern and in with which colors it just blends into the background. And this was fun. It was like, um, you know, now it is quite popular for people to use those coloring books and color them out with pencils. It was a bit like that, but uh, painting out drawing out those little stitches and yeah it gave me some good inspiration and also together with the stitch, stitch dictionary that I have shown you before I was playing around with a couple of stitches and I think I have some ideas of what I want to do but I really have to hold myself back because I would like to cast on this shawl immediately but I would first like to finish some projects Actually, I would like to finish all the three projects that I have shown you today before I will start uh, making something new. So this is the lovely, lovely Uradale yarn that I am really happy that I got. And thank you very much, Ida, for sticking with me at the booth and uh, helping me selecting the colors. And um, thank you also very much to the lady at the booth. I forgot your name, obviously. I forgot. I forget names much too quickly, I'm really sorry about that. But she was Trollenwool, um, she has a yarn shop I think in the Netherlands and um, on Instagram she's also Trollenwool and she was a really lovely woman to chat with and she was really helpful in um, talking about the construction of such triangular shawls in color work and also about um, the colors and the wool, she was just really, really helpful and friendly. And I really like it as a fairly young knitter. I am 
turning 30 this year, but there are a lot of knitters, of course, who are much older than me, who could be my mothers. And oftentimes when I go into a yarn shop where older ladies are working, I feel like they don't take me seriously as a knitter. They think um, I might have just started or it might be just a phase that I am going through and then I feel like they don't fully respect me as a knitter, which I can understand also. I mean, they have much more experience than I do. But I also really appreciate it if an older lady who has a lot more experience with knitting and techniques than I do, if they take me seriously and um, have a good conversation with me, I really, really appreciated that. And it was a wonderful experience. So thank you very much, Trollen Wool, for this um, lovely chat at your booth. And then finally, I was enabled by Lerke of uh, the Fiber Tales podcast to check out the booth of John Arvin and their Knit by Numbers yarn. And she had bought a wonderful mauve skein of their DK weight yarn and she was just casting on a a little sweater for her daughter and I was blown away by the softness of that yarn and so we had to go and check out their booth and then Nina, Ida and Eva and me went over to check out the booth and I wanted to buy a sweater's quantity in order to knit the Starfall sweater by Jennifer Steingas which is another uh, yoked sweater with a colorwork yoke and um, I think top down or bottom up construction and so I had the numbers written down on my phone of which quantities I needed of which colors and then we just went crazy because we were a bit in a hurry because some people had to leave and we had to go to say goodbye and it was just super crazy and I couldn't focus at all and basically the other three uh, wonderful ladies have just chosen the colors for me. <laughs> so the first color which is no. So the first color, which is the main color of the sweater, was actually chosen for me by Ida. And it is this lovely dark green. Of course I need a dark green sweater. I don't have a dark green sweater. So Ida was like, what about this one? Maybe you need a sweater in this color. And she was so right. So this is the um, Knit by Numbers Double Knit yarn and this is from, as I said, um, John Arban Textiles and it is 100 pure Falklands merino wool organically farmed and it is uh, 250 meters on 100 grams which is a DK weight yarn and it's non super wash and it's extremely soft. It is a little bit, um, it has a little bit of a halo, a bit like alpaca and it's Probably a bit fuzzy, might be peeling a little bit when I knit with it, but I don't mind. I am very looking forward to knitting with that. It's one of the softest yarns I've ever had. My boyfriend said it's the softest yarn I ever had, and he has some things made from Malabrigo and non superwash. So I am really happy with this yarn. The accent colors for the color work were also chosen by <laughs> Ida and this one was actually chosen by Eva and these are this lovely um, rusty uh, color and a wonderful muted yellow. And then of course you need also a, a main accent color so to say which kind of frames all the, the yoke uh, parts and for this I chose this natural skein which is undyed and actually in the end when I hold together all those colors, I realize that I think the white is a little bit too bright for my taste. Because originally I had a much lighter main color in my hands and for this one I took this accent color. But for this dark one I think this contrast is a bit too striking for my taste. And that's actually the only color that I chose myself. All the other colors were <laughs> chosen by my friends. And in the end I decided I think this one is a bit too bright for me so I went to the website of John Arban and I sent them a message and asked if I could order one skein of this in like a beige um, or more, um, more 
a bit a darker white, so to say a bit of a dirtier white. And I was able to order and it's even quite affordable. Also the shipping is quite affordable and that means I will be able to get that without having to pay import taxes. Because for me that's always a big thing here in Switzerland. If I think if I order things from outside and even gifts sometimes I have to pay import taxes and this is usually a lot of money for nothing basically. <laughs> of course it goes to the government and everything but I don't want to pay this much extra. So I was happy that it was possible to get this extra skein and I'm very looking forward to making this yoke sweater because yokes are so much fun to knit. So that is almost it with acquisitions. I have one last very beautiful thing that I have to share with you and I forgot to talk about her. Um, I met the lovely Patricia from Knitography Podcast and she is P4Hen on Instagram and she makes these adorable sock blockers. She also makes mitten blockers and she uses birch wood from her own birch trees on her farm for this and then a local um, sewing mill is making these uh, four millimeter thin sheets of the wood and then she creates the sock blockers out of it. Aren't they just gorgeous? They are so smooth and soft and have this beautiful selbu star on them that is traditional for the mittens and yeah so finally I have some sock blockers. I never wanted to buy sock blockers because I thought it was like something I didn't really need and if I wanted some then I wanted them to be really special and I think these are absolutely what I was looking for because they are very very special. Also I got a very cute little bee butter from um, Patricia which she makes we on her farm with her own uh, bee. Uh, beeswax and this just smells divine. It's just wonderful. It's just really really Sorry for that awkward um, Holding of the sock blockers. It's just really wonderful. So thank you very much Patricia Here is her card If you don't know it yet, she has a very beautiful uh, podcast vlog on YouTube where she tells some beautiful stories about Norway, about knitting tradition, about her farm. She is uh, really a lovely person and a very talented storyteller. So that was it. I hope I didn't forget anything. I probably did forget something. I am really sorry if I did. I will insert some video footage and pictures at the end of the episode and I am so happy that you are all here and thank you to everybody who said hello at the festival. Thank you to everybody who gave me a little pin or um, a little notion and it was just so wonderful to connect with all of you and you are all my family now. And if you didn't make it to EYF, I, am, uh, I hope you can make it next year because it's a really good experience and if you have any doubts about it because you may be a little bit shy. Don't worry, they are all the same, they are all just like us, so just give it a try and go to a festival and meet some knitters. It's the best thing ever. And with this I will say goodbye for today. I hope you enjoyed the episode, I hope you have a lot of time, uh, fun knitting on all of your projects and if you have any questions or would like to get in touch, come on over to our Ravelry group or follow me on Instagram and let's have a little chat. And yeah, enjoy the videos at the end of the episode and see you next time. Bye!